Welcome to the Veterinary Marketing Podcast, where it's all about helping your veterinary practice attract, engage, and retain clients. Broadcasting a new podcast every Monday from sunny Southern California, here's your host, Brandon Bashirs. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to episode number 128 of the Veterinary Marketing Podcast. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today, we're going to be talking about YouTube, how to use YouTube to grow your veterinary practice or your personal brand, whatever it is that you're looking to do. Um, We're going to talk about how to optimize your YouTube channel based on what goals you should be setting. And we'll talk even should you be focusing on YouTube as a channel to try and acquire new subscribers or how exactly should you use it. I think that YouTube is a fantastic platform i love youtube um but i think you need to do it right and you need to approach it with the right uh, mindset so that you can get the most out of it we'll be talking about that today before we start a few things i want to mention first if you haven't done so already be sure to subscribe in itunes or on google play and if you could do me a huge favor please leave me an honest review i would really really appreciate it um i'd also like to mention that this episode is being sponsored by usedvetequipment.com Check out usedvetequipment.com. It's a website by Brad Haven. He's the owner of the site, and it's been online for five years now. But what used vet equipment does is it brings buyers and sellers together. So do you have any used equipment in your storage room that you're looking to sell? Are you looking to save money by buying used? They have everything from cages and kennels, x-rays, ultrasounds, surgery and laser equipment, laboratory equipment for IDEX, from IDEX or Abaxis, they got tables, tubs, sinks, and all kinds of miscellaneous items. So if you're looking to buy or sell, check out usedvetequipment.com. It's kind of like the eBay for vets. And the website works. It really helps to protect both the buyer and the seller to sell used vet equipment. So there's tons of testimonials um, on the website. Head on over to usedvetequipment.com. Check it out. Be sure to let Brad know that you heard about it on the podcast. And um, if you're looking to buy or sell any Vet equipment, go on over to usedvetequipment.com. All right, so let's get into today's episode. We're going to be talking about YouTube today. Now, YouTube is a tremendous source of engagement, and, and people just spend tons of time on YouTube. Some interesting stats about YouTube. First, the first video that was ever uploaded to YouTube was April 23rd of 2005. And the total number of people who use YouTube on a regular basis right now are 1.3 billion people. What's amazing is that 300 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube every single minute. Um, There's almost 5 billion videos watched every single day, and YouTube gets over 30 million visitors per day. So that's pretty impressive. Um, In an average month, 8 out of 10 18 to 49-year-olds will watch YouTube. And by 2025, half of the viewers under 32 will not subscribe to a pay TV service. So it's pretty interesting. I think that YouTube has really emerged as a content platform as well as a search engine, and there's different ways that people use YouTube. So um, there's a lot more interesting stats that if you're interested in, um, you can search those out. But um, YouTube is a fantastic place to reach people. People spend time on YouTube. They spend time getting to know brands and things like that. I've talked to Dr. Cody Creelman in the past, um, and as well as uh, Dr. Sue Ettinger. Both have YouTube channels, and um, Dr. Andrew Burke has a YouTube channel. You know, A lot of people are, are using YouTube to build their brands and their personal brands online, so that that's one way that you can use YouTube is to develop a personal brand, and they've seen a lot of um, success as a result of of their videos and their content that they're producing. But if you have a veterinary practice, it's a little bit different. So before we start getting into kind of the tactics today, we'll talk about what YouTube is as far as a platform for people. There's really two different reasons, in my opinion, that people are spending time, if we try and simplify it as much as possible, there's two reasons why people are spending time on YouTube. Number one is that they're using it as a search engine. So for example, um, my dryer was breaking down over the weekend. It was making a weird noise. And so I searched for the model type weird noise and I was looking up videos to see how people were fixing it, seeing if it was something that I could fix or seeing if it was something that um, I could do, you know, should I even consider fixing it? 
And so a lot of times when people are look, looking for things, they want more context than just an article. Um, and so they'll go to YouTube to find out how to fix things, uh, how to look up symptoms, you know, all kinds of different things that people are, are searching for. And video is a great uh, method that will let you do that. And so I think that, um, you know, as opposed to Facebook or other platforms, YouTube works well as a search engine. They have great search algorithms. And so you can find content that you're looking for pretty quickly. It'll be relevant and it'll be specifically what you're looking for. So that's one way that people are using YouTube as a search engine. And there's another way that people are using YouTube, and that is um, they're consuming content on a regular basis with specific brands or people. So kind of like Dr. Cody Creelman, for example, who's producing content. He's fostering relationship with people on YouTube and people come back to him to see content. A lot of other YouTubers like that, um, you know, specifically like bigger YouTuber channels, um, maybe not even bigger ones, but, but smaller ones. People find um, interesting people who are producing content on a pretty regular basis and um, they begin to have a relationship with those people. And specifically when I think about, uh, you know, people who I in I'm talking with a lot people who use YouTube. It seems like that, you know, almost everybody has a channel that they're following and that they love to watch. And so it's become a legitimate content platform. As I mentioned, um, half of the people under 32 will not be paying for a pay TV service. I think that YouTube channels are actually filling that void as far as a content uh, platform uh, that produces content that people engage with and that they, they seek out. Um, and so I think that's the, the other way that typically people are using YouTube. So we have one hand, we have the search and the kind of information and knowledge type people. And on the other hand, we have brands that they want to engage with, that they want a deeper level of context with, and that they begin to build a relationship with. And so, um, I think that if you go through and just read the comments on Dr. Cody Krumlin's channel, for example, you'll see that these people are watching all of his videos they feel like they get to know him, his family, um, what he's all about, and, and things like that. So that deeper level of context really helps to um, increase his brand. It, it helps to just give him a lot of opportunities with his audience that he has because of the type of content that he produces. So before we start thinking about YouTube, we need to think about what is the end goal. And this is kind of with every piece of marketing that we're doing. What is the end goal that we're we're going to go for? Are we a local practice and we're just trying to get people in the immediate area who are going to be, um, you know, bringing their pets in? Or are we going to go for a, a bigger, broader audience? Something that would be nationwide or international where people will engage with and, and follow your content. Now, um, a lot of people who have a veterinary practice will ask, well, what would the benefit be of having, you know, an, a, a large audience of people all across the United States? They can't come into the practice, and that's totally true. But um, one thing that has always surprised me when I talk with Dr. Cody Krillman is that he gets new clients as a result of his videos. And so that seems crazy to me because he's not targeting locally, but um, if you create content that's going to appeal to your potential clients, or people that you want to do business with, I think eventually, once you get to a certain size, people will seek you out and they'll want to do business with you. So um, kind of reverse engineering it to, to think, well, what am I going to get out of it? What do I want to get out of it? That's what, that's what you need to start with. And so for the majority of practices, I would say starting with content that's going to be very local and very specific to topics that are going to be helpful for you to show up and search for. Um, that's going to be helpful. So let's talk about this local approach. Um, the majority of local approach needs to be using keywords that are relevant to people in your area, um, relevant to topics for people in your area, and then... Um, make sure that you're you're trying to provide value to those people based on the content that you're producing. If you're going to go for a larger demographic, I think that you need to be still very, you know, specific on what kind of topics that you're going to create. But if you're going for a larger audience, then you might want to be creating content that is more consumable from an entertain, entertainment standpoint rather than more of an informational standpoint. Um, and so mixing the two of entertaining and informational is important, but 
trying to figure out what the best balance of that is. I think for local, if you're trying to just drive views and people into your practice, you're going to want to be more informational. If you can be entertaining at the same time, then that's that's valuable. But if somebody is searching for something, then they're going to want to find that answer. And so your video should do that. So with local, let's talk about a few um, best practices that I see are important for a YouTube channel in general. So number one is creating the actual content of the video. So what are you going to create content around? Um, a good way to find out what kind of search volumes there are is to target, um, to use Google AdWords because they have a pretty good um, gauge on, on what you're searching for. So, you know, should you write, I mean, create a, a video about, you know, local dog parks in the area, right? If we're trying to create um, content that's going to be very um, relevant to people locally, and if you're trying to find out what, you know, to create, you're going to want to make sure and do something that's going to be relevant to, to people searching. So, like, for an example maybe people are searching for events to do with dogs in your area, right? So you have people that the only kind of people would be searching for that are people who own dogs who are looking for things that they can do in your area with dogs, right? Um, so that's, that's one thing. But what are we going to create the content about specifically? How are people going to find it? Do you want to find it through search? Do you want to find it through paid ads? Um, you know, where, where are you going to be publishing this content and how will people get in touch with it? Figuring out first what you're going to create content about. Will it be valuable or useful to the audience that's searching for it? That's where to start. And don't create content that's not going to be useful or entertaining or serve the specific purpose that you're looking to do. Now, you're not going to be able to tell every single time, is this going to be a success? And so there's going to be learning involved and, and trial and error and things. But um, I think that if you have a general idea of you know, typically, what are people asking all the time? Especially if you're in a veterinary practice, what are questions people keep asking? Um, what are some common problems of people who are pet owners in your area? And really try to solve those problems with your content is a, a good way to start um, reaching out and, and finding out what kind of content people are going to actually be interested in. So best practices here are what what is the content going to be about? And then that being the case, what is the best title for that that will appeal to search terms? So I typically want titles to be between 20 and 70 characters long. So it needs to be descriptive, and it, it's, but it, it can't be too long that it's too specific. So something between 20 and 70 characters is good. Um, and test headlines, you know, as much as possible, put the keyword that you're looking to, to rank for or the search term in that headline because it's helpful if somebody's searching for, for something, if they see that exact title, they'll probably click on it. So another um, best practice, there's a bunch of features within YouTube. There's things like um, info cards, there's end screens, um, there's thumbnails that you can edit. Become familiar with content that's on YouTube. So one of the best things that I can say is, you know, I'm sure that you probably have a YouTube channel that you really enjoy, especially the bigger YouTube channels that have hundreds of thousands or millions of subscribers. Pretty much everybody is doing these best practices because it's helpful um, and it helps you to get more views and more subscribers. And so info cards are um, little pop-ups that show up in the video that can take people to an external website. And so having uh, relevant info cards inside of the video helps you to get clicks and it also allows you to track those clicks. So um, add info cards to your videos. If you're gonna be talking about like boarding, for example, or if you're gonna be talking about a special or a specific problem, you know, link to a, a piece of content that, or an, another page where people can take action and the info card is how you do that. <coughs> Next, you're gonna to wanna to add an end screen an end screen is what happens at the end of the video. Uh, and so people can either watch more content, they can subscribe, or they can go to a link on your website. And so it's always important to put end screens in there. Just to let you know, I've tested this really, really extensively. The best end screens to put are subscribe button 
uh, another video, which is the best for viewer option that has the highest click through rate by far on any other type of, of video. And so um, if, if you've seen any YouTube videos, you probably noticed at the end of that YouTube video, the more videos play. That's called an end screen. So the last 20 seconds can be an end screen. And um, it helps that viewer to either engage with more content, subscribe, or go somewhere that you're looking for them to go to. So end screens are very important because you can usually get between a, I'd say two and 7% click through rate, which is really helpful um, as far as generating more subscribers as well as generating more views for your channel. So that's helpful. The next best practice is to add specific descriptions. So make sure that the description is very, very um, topical and related to what you're talking about. Um, you can have up to 5,000 characters in your description, so that's a lot of space. I would make it as long as possible without making it um, redundant or forced. So just really talk about what you're going to be talking about. I also like to put links to other um, social media properties. Uh, I always like to put a subscribe link um, for the YouTube channel in there and then anything else that you're talking about. So if you want people to sign up for, uh, you know, maybe you're going to do a video about dental health with your pets. Um, if you're going to be doing that, maybe put a specific offer in there, in that link description, um, so that people can take you up on that offer. The next thing that is a best practice that you're going to want to make sure and do is put tags. And so with the tags, it's kind of how Google figures out what the video is about. So make sure that you're putting uh, tags that are relevant to the video. Now with tags, I found that there are a few different things that you can do with tags. So you can be tagging things that are going for search terms, which is a, a good strategy. Or if you want to be showing up in related videos, and that's one thing, we'll talk about that in just a second, you can tailor your tags to show up in related videos of other channels so that already have subscribers and things. So if you're trying to piggyback off of uh, established channels, you can be copying or using a lot of the tags that they have been using so that you're showing up in related videos um, specific related videos that you're trying to, to rank for. So this kind of goes back to who are you creating these videos for? Are you creating them for searchers or for people who are already using the platform and spending time on the platform? So there's two different strategies to show up in suggested results is helpful. If you can be showing up on a, a channel that already has established viewer base that you're also wanting to tap into and so with uh, specifically the brands that I'm working with that have a larger audience that, that they want to be reaching, a nationwide audience specifically, I'm trying to get these videos to rank within, um, you know, like this. For example, if there's a popular YouTube channel that's pet related or something and, and they want to be showing up in the search results after the video or the sidebar there, it's helpful to work on suggested uh, tags and going after videos that have uh, views and established viewers there. If we're just trying to do search terms, then I'm going to be putting tags with the search terms that are going to be the highest um, volume and the, the lowest competition, hopefully. So um, I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions about this, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, but I think this can be pretty helpful for you. So most veterinary practices that are local businesses are trying to show up in search, you're probably not going to want to focus too much on the um, suggested video tags that I'm mentioning here. But if you're on a trying to target a larger audience, um, then that suggested video tag will be something that's going to be helpful for you. So that's, that's one thing that's important to do inside of your YouTube channel. Another thing that's important is um, adding playlists that are relevant and the playlists also can have um, relevant keywords in that as well. So whenever it's possible, you're going to want to make sure and tag um, local areas and, and things like that and put that keyword in there, your town name and all kinds of stuff. So um, make it as, as relevant to local as possible if you're trying to show up for people that are doing searches. So Google owns YouTube. Obviously, everybody knows that. Um, and so YouTube videos do have a pretty good chance of ranking in organic Google searches as well. So um, that's just something to consider for sure. Is you know, are we going to try and rank videos that will show up in organic? That's a, a viable strategy. Um, and it's probably easier to do than, 
you know, specific other pieces of content, just because Google owns this property as well. So kind of thinking about this from a local perspective is if you're going to make content, you need to make sure that it's useful to people. It's informational, entertaining, hopefully. Um, and then also very relevant to local and the target demographic that you're going for. So it is possible to rank videos uh, for specific search terms in specific areas, but it is a little bit difficult for uh, channels that are just starting out to kind of break through. And it seems like that there's a lot of difficulty in getting views and things and showing up in search results, especially before you have you know, a few hundred or a thousand subscribers. And it seems like that, that is kind of a weird benchmark that, that happens. Now, YouTube has come out and said over and over again, this is not the case. We don't favor large channels. But a lot of content creators um, have had a really hard time just kind of emerging as, as a channel. And so if you're going to go to YouTube, there's a few things I think that are going to be helpful in setting expectations. Now, number one is that YouTube subscriber growth is pretty slow. Even if you have a big established Facebook Facebook page, it's hard to get people to come from Facebook to subscribe in YouTube. Um, so that's one thing. Number two is it is difficult and it takes a lot of work to build your subscriber base if you're just going to work within YouTube specifically. And so you're going to have to have a longer term um, outlook on this. But I think that if you're diversified and you have a YouTube channel that does have subscribers, you're going to feel good about that, especially with all the changes that are going on in Facebook. So having diversification is something that is, is going to be beneficial for you. Um, so one thing that you can do to try to build subscribers is do content that's just specific for YouTube. So if you have a channel, make sure that you're, you're sending and, and promoting people to go to that channel. Um, and especially within your, your list specifically, um, YouTube is still a great marketing platform to do ads on. And so if you want to do retargeting ads, um, have hospital tours, if you want to do videos of, um, specific services, you can still get really, really cheap views on YouTube. Um, it's even comparable to, to Facebook video, in my opinion. So you can have all of the targeting options that AdWords has within, uh, respect with respect to you know, location targeting demographic choices all kinds of th cool stuff but um you can if you can create content that's compelling and people want to watch then you can pay for ads to get people to to come into your practice and so video is just a, a great medium for that because it gives people more context it lets them understand you know what is involved and um it just is a great medium to to produce content on and so um I think that, that this is definitely a, a great place and an underutilized opportunity for a lot of vetting practices and local businesses in general, just because most people aren't creating content for YouTube specifically. So um, if you're a veterinary practice who has the ability to create video, it's a, a great platform to host that on. Now, uh, a few tips and tricks here. Number one is that um, there is... Uh, upload defaults and channel settings. Make sure that your channel uh, settings and your branding is done completely uh, before you get started. And then also set a list of, I would say, seven to 10 tags that you're gonna be putting on every single video and use those for the upload defaults. So you can have a description um, upload defaults where you set maybe all of your links to social program and um, social platforms. So maybe you have, you know, be sure to follow our practice at Facebook, at Instagram, at Snapchat, and then website, something like that, you know, that way you don't have to keep copying and pasting it over and over again. Um, and then also having your default tags show up so that you have a, a basic standard set of tags. And if you use the same, you know, seven to 10 tags, as long as it's not too um, long, it'll really help you to show up in related videos for yourself. So you want to make sure that if somebody's watching your content, that your videos are going to show up in your own related and suggested videos so people can watch more. And so that being said, having a consistent tag um, strategy is important. You know, and so I would do things like your practice name, your city, um, vet near your city, you know, specific search terms that are going to be beneficial for local. So there's that. Um, another tip that it really helps you to get engagement and subscribers is to um, upload regularly. And it seems that uh, YouTube's algorithm really favors people who are uploading content regularly. 
daily is what apparently is the best. I know that's not very um, feasible for almost everybody. So I would say weekly at is a is a good alternative to daily, if as much as you can do, but at least weekly. And then if you do it at a consistent interval so that your audience knows when you're going to be uploading so that they can expect a new video or something, it's going to be helpful in uh, generating more subscribers. So I hope that this was helpful to you. I think that YouTube is a very underutilized medium just because it has so many users. Um, it's the number two search engine in all the world. So I think that um, you know going after these these users and people that are engaging in that platform already is a great strategy. And especially when things happen to your other social channels, things like Facebook and stuff, you know, changes algorithms and makes it less business friendly. Going over to YouTube and helping to diversify your, your following is always a good idea. So if you have any questions, you need help with anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm happy to uh, answer questions on this. And um, if you have need any clarification about some of the strategies I talked about, don't hesitate to reach out. Be sure to uh, visit youthvetequipment.com and support the sponsors of the show. And uh, I appreciate you watching. Again, if you could do me a huge favor, leave me an honest review on iTunes or Google Play. I would really appreciate it. And I will see you on next week's episode. Have a good one.